Hi, I'm Tom Edwards. I'm the Chief Digital and Innovation Officer for the Agency Business at Epsilon. And today, we're going to talk about South by Southwest 2019. Every year, I look forward to the annual trek down to Austin. And this year, I had my VP of Creative Technology, Ian Beecraft, there as well. Uh, Ian was a featured speaker during the South by Southwest Ignite uh, section of the show. And as we get into it, you know, I've been coming here for well over a decade. And one of the things that, that you'll always see whenever you come to South by Southwest is definitely, uh, let's say, keeping Austin a little bit weird. You can see everything from green-faced aliens to angels and demons to teddy bears driving police carts. It's, it's just part of the fun here because what you really see here, you've got CES, which is all about the technology, the Mobile World Congress, which is all about the infrastructure. What's great about South by Southwest, especially from a marketing perspective, this is the intersection of experience. This is where you begin to see technologies aligning physical and digital. You get to see massive brand activations, and it's just a great place to see everything kind of converging. So one of the biggest macro trends so far from 2019 has definitely been all the electric scooters that are around town. Uh, the best part is actually when people walk up to it and try to clap it to activate. But definitely uh, scooters were a highlight this year. <laughs> but in all seriousness, when you start getting into how South by Southwest has evolved, you know, in the, uh, in the early 2000s, it was really about the technology. You saw Twitter get its launch here. You saw Foursquare get its launch here and everything from a lot of the live streaming platforms. Now in 2019, it's more of a reflection of society. So you're seeing a lot more around activism here. You're seeing it just across the board in terms of empowerment, You know, whether you're talking about food accessibility, political, female empowerment, just empowerment in general. Like it's been a, it, it was a really macro theme of the show. But from a marketing perspective, it starts with the activations. So each year, the, the, just the, the sheer size of some of the experiential elements. Last year, it was all about Westworld, and we covered that in last year's trend recap. This year, it was about Amazon Prime and their, their Good Omens show, as well as Game of Thrones and their Bleed for the Throne experience. This is a really big uh, step forward here. This is the final season of Game of Thrones, and what they actually did is people were able to come into the experience and actually donate blood. So they tied it to a specific cause. There were other major brand activations from Netflix and The Highwaymen, which is creating pop-up experiences, and Michelob Ultra, Uber Eats, um, Bumble, even Facebook had their own activation. But what I really want to focus on here, it's that convergence of technology and consumer behavior. That's a core area that we focus on each year from a trend perspective. And this being South by Southwest and the fact that Foursquare launched here 10 years ago, it was interesting to see what they rolled out here for the show. And it has long-term implications as we think about the continual connection between physical and digital, uh, smart cities, everything connected via AI, data visualization. So I found this to be incredibly interesting. And that was the idea of hypertrending. So again, this is, you know, Foursquare is all about being location-based service. And with hypertrending, it really provided this top-down view of all the places, phones that Foursquare knew were in Austin. So this map gives you a view of how people are spread out through the city. And each dot represents a different place. The size of the dot corresponds to the number of people. To me, this was not only about this was not about destination, but when you start imagining the AR overlays that are coming, how phones move in and out, you know, Foursquare has 100 million places out located around the world, you know, and all this data is anonymized and aggregated. But to me, it's it's similar to online. So online is all about driving traffic and discovery, but now this is about physical and spatial discovery, and that's going to be driven by location and visualization. That's a really key point to consider as we think about how by shifting the way in which we view the world, starting from mobile and shifting into multimodal, this type of data visualization and heat, sensing, uh, sorry, heat maps that are associated with key areas of experience and individuals, it's going to be a key thing to watch as we kind of move forward. So I was really, really intrigued by the hyper-trending um, execution here that came out of Foursquare Labs. So as we get into spatial computing, spatial computing was huge at this year's show. 
And it's essentially the ability for individuals to interact around their environment. And this is where we lump all of the different types of realities, from virtual to extended to enhanced to mixed to synthetic to hyper. Anything that has to do with reality, we're lumping under the spatial computing, uh, spatial computing area. So extending from last year, last year one of the, the stars of the show was actually Bose. And Bose showcased their their audio-based augmented reality glasses. And it was a really interesting twist because in order to eliminate the bridge and the jump and to make it easier for consumers who are already used to working and interacting with voice-based assistants, I mean, you've got, uh, you've got over 90 million people using their voice-based assistants via their phone on a monthly basis. So audio is the first step without the digital visual overlays was kind of the first step for Bose last year. This year they incorporated a bit more in terms of not only audio, but more around the augmented reality piece, more around the additional functionality in the glasses. You could actually take a call from the glasses here as well. So thinking about the role that location plus audio plus augmented reality are going to play here as experiences, especially physical experiences evolve is really key. The next thing to think about here also is the role of volumetric capture. We saw this a lot at CES as well. As we're expanding and moving towards the time to where this intersection between physical and digital is going to continue to, to blur, the ability to capture images in three dimensions, then being able to render them in various locations at various sizes is going to be incredibly key. This is gonna impact retail, this is gonna impact automotive, automotive showrooms, this is gonna impact a lot of key elements because the first step in truly digitizing the world starts with volumetric capture. So we definitely saw more of that. And then what you're looking at here is a technology called Looking Glass. So one of the cooler elements is this idea of mixed reality. So being able to take and spatially interact with the world around you. And what you're looking at here is a particle rendering of a portrait from the Bode Museum. This is using a technology called Redshift. And it's amazing. It's taking a traditionally physical static object and you're able to then completely digitize it and create an entirely new experience based on this, this single canvas. So being able to take and mark specific locations and turn any specific room into an interactive deep experience is something that we're all working towards as marketers. But we're getting significantly closer and here's another example of why. So thinking about spatial computing, most we used to think about it purely from, you know, you have to have a headset on and you have to be able to kind of have all this gear on. What you're looking at here is a rendering from basically iOS 12, uh, their uh, augmented reality kit, as well as gesture-based interfaces to activate this business card experience. So you take a single piece of collateral, and then you're able to digitally overlay that into an, ex an interactive experience that's much more immersive than simply looking at a business card. So as we move from just mobile as the primary way in which we interface towards voice, vision, and touch, using the mobile device, using the fact now that we can take and deploy augmented reality experiences simply from a web browser, it's evolved a lot from whenever I first launched an AR-based experience with Volkswagen way back in 2011. That process was complex. It was difficult. There was a lot of onus on the user to take and activate. Now, it's as simple as looking at a business card, activating the experience, and then essentially using gestures to navigate. One of the other core things that we've seen over the course of the, this year, it's definitely more like Ready Player One. It's the whole idea of incorporating more haptic feedback into immersive experiences. Haptic feedback simply meaning that your body is now reacting to what you're seeing within these immersive experiences. So this is actually the Tesla haptic feedback suit that, uh, that this reporter is actually wearing. And it essentially provides exactly what it says, haptic feedback. You know, if you ever have the opportunity to go to one of the Cinemark Void experiences you, where you can wear a full haptic rig and get deep into hyper-reality and actually feel what's happening, uh, I highly, highly recommend it. So one of the other things that we did as an, as an agency there at South by Southwest, uh, we not only consumed a lot of the trends that were there, we also discussed a lot based on our, our core offerings over the last three years. 
So we did a joint session with our strategic partner, Oculus 360, and talked about how Epsilon Agency is using data and applying it to emerging markets, how we're able to take structured and unstructured data and be able to drive different types of insights and business drivers associated with that. So we can definitely set up a separate time to talk about the capabilities and the case studies there. But that was a key part of what we did. We discussed multiple facets of machine learning. Again, machine learning is simply human coded algorithms and how that can apply to driving business growth. So on the other side of machine learning is deep learning. And one of the things that we saw on the show floor, this was a fun little AI gaming robot to where it's essentially training itself on how to play the game. So you may have seen AlphaGo, you may have seen other systems. This one, they're actually kind of personifying the robot a little bit, which I thought was pretty funny, you know, giving it much more of a, a humanoid, more traditional robot feel. But make no mistake about it, the system is learning and training itself on how to master the game. And that's really what deep learning is all about. Deep learning is about the systems taking and training itself through multiple rounds of simulation to be able to drive predictive decisioning. And this is something we're definitely exploring as an agency as we continue to build out our AI practice and capabilities. The other thing to consider, and we saw this at CES as well. So we saw the fact that there, there's a lot of personification or trying to drive emotive robotics, basically taking robots in hardware form and using those to become uh, essentially part of people's everyday lives. I'm much more of a believer in the software side and how virtual assistants and the usage of those, you've got 45 million people using smart speakers every month. You have 90 million people interacting with voice-based assistants via their phone. So you start thinking about the just velocity that we've seen over the past few years tied to voice. And then you start combining that with how a lot of the actual hardware manufacturers are moving virtual assistants toward the center you begin to see the rise of what we call potentially the proxy web. The number one reason why people adopt, are open to adopting artificial intelligence and virtual assistance over the across generational cohorts, it comes down to ease and convenience. So what we're seeing here is we're seeing a bit of a divergence. We're seeing organizations like Temi on screen that are building hardware specific personal robots that fit into your family. You then see what, what Amazon and Google are doing, which the focus there is around voice and voice-based uh, voice based assistance. Then you see what Apple is doing with Siri, and Siri is built on the premise of taking and extending native applications. There's almost a silent arms race that's taking place right now tied to virtual assistants, where ultimately, as the systems are able to predict our needs that's when we're going to begin to see mass adoption. But it's going to be really interesting to watch these kind of three divergent areas and how they impact industries. Physical robotics, robot, uh, virtual assistant AI based on you know, Google and Amazon's approach, as well as Apple's continued approach to integrate and extend the native application and keep the mobile device relevant through Siri. And lastly, you know, a lot of what we did at the show also was talk about uh, innovation thought leadership. So Ian Beecraft had the opportunity to go and present uh, during the Ignite uh, South by Southwest segment here, and he did a phenomenal job. And the whole topic of discussion was how do you take and apply basically taking the, the exponential just rate of acceleration of technology overlaid against kind of nonlinear organizations and how the two can meet and how to stay agile, even if your industry is becoming saturated and is on the decline. It was a really interesting set. Um, I highly recommend uh, pulling Ian in for a session to, uh, to cover that as well. So that was it. So South by Southwest this year it had a much different vibe than, than years in the past. And you're really beginning to see that focus around the rise of spatial computing the role that, that it's going to play in kind of the connection of physical and digital and the, the, the extension of experience. As organizations like Apple and Facebook and Google and others are trying to make it easier and easier and easier to create digital experiences, we're going to come to a time very quickly where we're going to continue to move from the mobile device into multimodal computing. That's voice, vision, and touch, and ultimately our environment adapting to us versus us adapting to it. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Uh, our email addresses are there on the screen. Uh, again, thank you for listening to the South by Southwest 2019 recap. Have a great day.